So I have been on this crusade against the scholarship secretariat because of what I know firsthand. And something you know that um, by virtue of my research um, travels across Europe, I've met a couple and a number of many, many students in many conferences and many academic fora. And they tell me stories that, um, for example, I go to France for a conference and I meet a Ghanaian student who tells me his experience with scholarship secretariat. And then I go to Belgium for a conference and a Ghanaian also tells me a story that is similar to what the, uh, the person in France told me. I go to the UK and I meet a number, dozens of students who are telling me their experience with scholarship secretariat. The same thing in Germany, you meet students and they tell you stories about scholarship secretariat. And all these stories, when you tally them, you see a semblance or you see a, a trend that makes it impossible for you to ignore the stark uh, reality or probability that these stories are probably true by virtue of the preponderances and the corroborative natures, uh, nature of the kinds of stories that you hear from, from these students. Samson, I have heard students, for example, tell me that they pay huge sums of money and some have told me they paid as much as 5,000 pounds in order to get a scholarship of say 40,000 pounds. I have heard students tell me that they pay sometimes just 30,000 Ghana cities just to get a letter to prove that the scholarship secretariat is willing to give them a scholarship. So in essence, they are not buying the scholarship. They are just buying uh, what we call an offer letter from the scholarship secretariat. And this offer letter, they see it as a guarantee of they gaining visa. So then you raise then the question of visa racketeering also sets in. So when I hear people say that Fourth Estate has just uh, come up with people who have received scholarships and that there's nothing wrong with it. What I'm saying is that scholarships, um, what's the name? Fourth Estate has only provided us an avenue to look deeply into um, matters that are gangrening or matters that are rotting as far as the scholarship secretariat is concerned. Samson, I'll tell you a story, a very mm. grim story of a student mm. who scholarship secretariat transferred 8,000 euros to, to the person. And the scholarship secretariat apparently has intermediaries who normally, they, so on record in Ghana, the student has received 8,000 euros. But then the scholarship secretariat using a corrupt intermediary will come back door and take the money back and give you a percentage out of that. Seriously? So let's say they transfer. Yes, this is stories that I've seen. And in fact, I have seen evidence of somebody whose bank account was closed down because when the scholarship secretariat sent the intermediary to take the money, the person went to withdraw the money at a go in an European bank. I don't want to mention the country for fear of they victimizing the students in these countries. So when he went to withdraw the money, all of it from the bank, it triggered an alert within the banking system. How can somebody come in? Because in Germany, for example, you're allowed to withdraw uh, 2,000 euros at a go. So when they saw such withdrawals happening within a short space of time, it triggered an alert within the banking system. They wrote a letter to this person and closed down his bank account. I have seen the letter with my own eye. The person's bank account was closed. Why? Because when scholarship secretariat transferred the money, the person went to withdraw the money and gave 6,000 euros out of what was transferred to the corrupt agent who was fronting the, this uh, whole thing for, for the scholarship secretariat. So when we talk about the scholarship secretariat, the problems associated with the scholarship secretariat are enormous. There is a problem of nepotism. I have seen people who have PhDs and have still been offered scholarship by scholarship secretariat to go and do PhD again. So at this point, you ask yourself, while there are many young Ghanaians who are struggling to even obtain a first degree just because they don't have money, Others have the luxury of doing a second PhD or a second master's, all under uh, monies provided by our taxes. So when you hear stories or the kind of justifications that come out from the scholarship secretariat, it makes me want to throw up mm. because it tells me the people who are manning the scholarship secretariat have no conscience at all to say that they are Ghanaians or these people who have been given are Ghanaians and so they are deserving. That is not an excuse enough. In every reasonable society, you provide what we call a safety net for the weak. And that is why uh, it is commendable that His Excellency Nanado uh, brought the, the three SHS. So it provides safety net, net for the poor. But upwards of 
um, from the three SHS or across from, from HHS. Mm. There are many students who are confronted with enormous challenges in terms of progression. Mm. And some of us receive a lot of requests from these students. And but, it, when I see these requests mm. and I compare it with the stories that I know about the scholarship secretariat, I become very sad and very annoyed as a Ghanaian. Something. There are stories where Ghanaians have been sponsored to go and study, for example, in the UK. And then, under normal circumstances, when you, when you are sponsored with, I mean, state funds, you are, you are expected to come back and, uh, I mean, I mean uh, assist the state in one right. way or another. Mm. Do you know that there are, for example, students who, after completion, they, because the government that has issued you the visa knows that you were sponsored by your government, you are requested to go back. They will request what they call a letter of consent from your scholarship secretariat in case you want to continue your stay in that particular country. Now, there are students, who, there are some graduates who are paying £3,000 to the scholarship secretariat to get what they call the letter of consent. And do you know what they do in the UK and other countries? They become janitors. They begin to serve in the uh, old age homes after being sponsored with thousands of pounds of Ghanaian hard, cold cash. They become janitors. And in order to get the letters of consent, some of them told me personally mm. that mm. they paid upwards of £3,000 to get a letter of consent in order to get what they call a graduate visa of job seeking business in Fright those countries. And uh, then they become janitors in, in those countries. So this is what we, our taxes are being used for. Scary. And then somebody sits at the scholarship secretariat and tries to justify this. I uh, wonder if such people have conscience at all.